Again to Community United Methodist Church here in Fairfield, California. I'm Pastor Ann Choi and welcome you to worship this morning. Once uh, another Sunday here in our sheltering in place. As we gather this morning, we welcome you as we prepare ourselves to worship God uh, together in spirit, though not in person. I want to invite you as we uh, have our worship time to greet one another, to reach out by text or email, uh, perhaps a phone call later, uh, just to connect and, and wish each other a good Sunday morning to bless each other. Also, we'll have social hour by Zoom after the worship. Please see your email with a link for that, uh, that connection. And we want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube page. You will be watching this on our YouTube page. If you would uh, see the subscribe under it, CUMC Fairfield, then you will receive notifications of our um, of our any new videos that that come out. So we welcome you, and we are glad that you are here with us. Uh, our first song this morning is "He Lives." Deep breath in 
and blow out. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you that our Lord Jesus is risen. And because of him, we can have new life with you. Lead us each day with hope for your promise to be with us in the midst of all times and in all places. With you, we can get through this time as well. Pour out your Holy Spirit with courage and peace for these days that we may be your witnesses and your presence in the world. We pray for our first responders, for medical staff, for grocery workers, delivery drivers, food workers, who are truly essential parts of all our communities. We also pray for our world and community leaders. Bless them all with your wisdom and discernment, with your hope and peace, with good rest and health as they make sacrifices and decisions for us all. May they know your pleasure and power to serve as you did while you were among us. We lift up to you those who are sick, who are dying, for their loved ones, may your promise of new life give hope for all that is still yet ahead. Make us grateful, Lord, for the things we take for granted, for friends and family, for homes and food. Help us see clearly what is important and what is not, making space in our lives for the things that matter most. Oh Lord, truly we will never know how glad you were to see our sin on your cross, and we praise you that in your name we are forgiven. Meet us in our fears, in our anger, in our confusion. Reveal and remove all that keeps us from trusting you and following you. We pray now together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning, until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, 
they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. May God add meaning and understanding to these words. Disciples of his suffering and his death, that he would rise again. And of course, the actual happening of it was much more amazing than just hearing about it. The men and women who followed him, they all ran away, denied him, were silent, were afraid. And so now as Jesus is resurrected, it's, I would imagine, hard to believe. It's hard to get their minds around the shock and the wonder of Jesus being alive, that he is resurrected. We go now this Sunday to the book of Acts, which is a continuation of the Gospel of Luke. And at the end of Luke, it is clear that Jesus has been seen after his death. It's not always recognized at first, but it is clearly him. Many have seen Jesus, and he's speaking of God's kingdom and what is coming next. And the disciples are filled with great joy. Because Easter, friends, is not just one day. It wasn't just last Sunday, and now it's done. Easter, we are now in the season of Easter the weeks leading up to Pentecost. And really, each Sunday that we gather in worship is a time to remember and celebrate Jesus' resurrection. The reality of new life changes everything. It points to God's kingdom way of life, and we are God's resurrection people, living out God's hope of new life, even now in our current situations. Last week we talked about seeking God and being amazed that God's story continues and we will surely see that this week. In Jesus' ministry on earth, God ushered in a new thing where God was with us, God with us here. And his resurrection, Jesus' death and his resurrection leads to a whole new phase. In verse 5, Jesus reminds his followers that he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. In every gospel, John the Baptist is saying this at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, that as John baptizes with water, Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And the fact that it is repeated in every gospel tells us that this is a significant and important piece of God's plan. Jesus tells them this baptism of the Holy Spirit is now getting very near. This is the promise of the Heavenly Father. Now, as always, the disciples are not caught up with where Jesus is and what God is doing. We never are. And so they ask, is this the time that you will restore God's kingdom? Jesus reminds them nobody will know when that is or when that's happening. We've heard that before. And you know, frankly, I'm kind of glad that the disciples forget and that they keep asking because, you know, a lot's been going on. And that says to me, we can keep asking questions as well because we don't fully get it. We don't understand or remember what Jesus is doing. And God invites us to ask. But in verse 8, Jesus says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus ascends to heaven. These are his last words to them, his last moment with them for now. And with Jesus' leaving, soon the Holy Spirit will come. You know, while Jesus is here, of course, our focus is on Jesus. He, he's the man. He's the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God. He is the one we are waiting for. And of course, Jesus did send out his disciples to do things, do things like he, what he did, do things in the name of Jesus and the authority of Jesus. 
But now, with Jesus leaving, who will be doing God's work? Who will lead and direct the way? The Holy Spirit's coming will give power to Jesus' followers to teach and lead as Jesus did and more. The focus is still on Jesus, but Jesus' followers, his church, his people, are God's witnesses, telling of Jesus, led by the Holy Spirit, by God's Spirit. Jesus' followers will give witness, telling of Jesus and the kingdom of God in a whole new way. This is what is about to happen. You know, I wonder if, if you knew that the coronavirus would lead to a sheltering in place, what would you have done to get ready for it? Maybe buy toilet paper before it all runs out, buy some masks, stock food, perhaps learn how to cook. You might have gotten a computer if you don't have one or upgrade the one you have so that you could go online easily. You might have learned how to do that. You might have tried to save more money for emergencies. You might have gotten games, puzzles, a bike, a basketball hoop to occupy your time. What is important in our preparing? And in that, what can we actually do? There are some things we can't do, but we see now that the disciples, they are now being called apostles. It's like a job change. They went from being Jesus' followers and learners, and now they are ambassadors. They are his representatives being sent out. They will be witnesses, like in a legal court, to speak about and on behalf of Jesus. What will it mean for them to get ready for this new thing? I imagine some of them might be coming up with ideas, plans for what is coming next. How they could do what Jesus said, how they could serve God. And with Jesus gone, they might start to think, whoa, this is a big job. We're all alone now. It all depends on us. Or they might even think it's all about us. It's so easy to start thinking this in good times or bad times, whether you're afraid or excited, whether you're angry or hopeful. It's human to think we have to do it. We can make things happen or can't make things happen. Because aren't people always asking, well, what are you going to do? Some things are doable. They are within our resources, our abilities, but I find in this time of the coronavirus, we see that much is far beyond our control, our knowledge, our understanding. What can we do now? For most of us, perhaps we are just trying to find out accurate information, staying connected with friends and loved ones, getting good sleep, eating healthy, getting some exercise, staying, trying to stay positive. Our essential workers, I'm sure they're just trying to stay safe, stay sane and healthy to keep at their work. And the rest of us just managing ourselves as best we can, helping as we are able. If the solution depends on people alone, we can be overwhelmed. We can despair or we can also become prideful or arrogant. But Jesus said just before he left, you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses. Don't leave Jerusalem. Wait there for the Father's promise, for the Holy Spirit. And we hear that 11 out of the 12 followers are left. They are named. They are there with Mary, the mother of Jesus, the, some of the women who also followed, and Jesus' brothers. They go together to where they are staying in Jerusalem. And here they are, all the disciples, all the core people who abandoned Jesus, here they are now, and they are core to what Jesus is about to do, to what God is about to do next. 
They are sheltering in place, waiting, waiting for they don't know how long, waiting for what they don't know what it's going to be like. But they are devoted to prayer. I think they saw Jesus do that all the time. That was a good decision to devote themselves to prayer. And as they wait together, they were getting ready to receive the Holy Spirit to be Jesus' witnesses for what was still to come. Their prayer connected them to God and to each other to continue to trust Jesus, and it prepared them to recognize, to keep watch. I imagine that if they were by themselves, they might get kind of lost or forget or distracted, focus on their own plan. But with God, with each other, they were able to stay focused on what was to come. I wonder that they spent their time remembering. Hey, do you remember when Jesus did? I can't believe that we saw and were there when Jesus. And they're sharing and talking and remembering what that was like being there, what happened. And I wonder that they are also imagining what will happen? What could happen? You know, Jesus told us he would suffer and die and rise again. And Wow, who would have believed what it was like when that happened? He was right about that. Then I wonder what is still to come. What is going to happen yet? As witnesses, they are remembering Jesus together and that helps them focus on who Jesus is, practicing telling what they have seen, who Jesus is and was, practicing to tell others when the time comes. They are getting ready to receive the Holy Spirit for what God has next as Jesus' witnesses. Last Sunday, I encouraged us to seek God to be amazed, to remember where God is still active in the world. And last Friday, Good Friday, Pastor Lois texted me about something that happened to her and Dick. And I invited her to share her witness with us all. So here, please see Pastor Lois's testimony. I must admit that online church did, was not very appealing to me. But by Palm Sunday, when our souls were touched by the online services, it was surprise and unexpected. It was like a light in the darkness. And we were looking forward to the Good Friday service for that light to shine and brighten up our home again. Before the Good Friday service, we set up a worship area with computer, cross, and candle on the table overlooking the backyard. We were anticipating a worship experience, touching into God and being touched. Near the end of the service, Dick and I were both distracted and looked up. We still don't know what that distraction was. But what we saw was a reflection in the hummingbird feeder. That reflection was an angel. An angel in a blue robe with wings as taller than the head and coming all the way down to the feet. We were absolutely amazed. We both grabbed our cameras and took a picture. Yes, it actually was there long enough for us to get a picture so that we knew what we really saw. My spirit was overwhelming and overflowing and I couldn't wait to tell someone so I texted Pastor Ann. Dick and I both felt the vision was a confirmation that God is with us and everything will be okay. A message of hope and of faith. We were amazed by God touching into our lives and blessing us in that way so that we could share the Lord's message 
of presence and caring with you. Oh, friends, thanks be to God. I wanted to show you a picture of uh, what she, the pictures that she sent me, a picture of their worship space. You can see their computer set up, and you can see uh, the, the hummingbird feeder that she mentioned outside their window to the left. She sent me that picture of worship first, but then later as we spoke, she sent me the close-up, the close-up of the hummingbird feeder that she spoke of. And friends, I don't know how you are feeling, but I was truly amazed. And I kept looking at it thinking, can this be? I, I, honestly, I'm still in a bit of wonder. And I am grateful to God that God is reminding them and through them reminding us that he is close by, that God is with us. And I have to say, even as she, I watched her testimony, I felt this burden lift from my shoulders. It makes me eager to watch and see and hear what else is happening because surely God is here. Friends, I want you to watch for the Holy Spirit with others. Be watching, looking. Be Jesus' witnesses with your words and your actions. This is our core purpose as his followers. Where have you seen God? Where is God nudging you? Maybe it's not an angel, but please share that with me, with us, with others. What would you have to give witness to? To tell others about who Jesus is. What has Jesus done in your life? We must remember, we must stay focused to pray, to hear God's story in Scripture, to tell others who God is. Whether we are sheltering in place, whether we are the disciples waiting, we see the wisdom and importance of Jesus telling his people to wait together to keep watch, to trust God. Let's welcome God's Spirit to lead the way as we get ready for the new thing that God is still doing. Let us watch for the Holy Spirit with others. Let's be Jesus' witnesses together. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. As we move into a time of silence, Consider where you have experienced Jesus in your life. Maybe ask God to bring something to mind. Maybe something already has come to your mind. So spend your time remembering. Let's take a deep breath in. We'll pray our prayer. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, O oh God. One more time. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, O oh God. One more time. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, O oh God. Lord, we praise you and thank you that you have not left us alone, but you come to remind us of your closeness and of your power and your love for us. We praise you for Dick and Lois's witness of your presence. Your followers didn't always recognize you when you appeared. Give us all eyes to see you and hearts and minds open to welcome your Holy Spirit. Be with us where we are, 
afraid or unsure, and lead us to watch for you together with hope and possibility of all that is yet to come. Guide us to be your resurrection people and help us to proclaim the grace that is free to all in the name and power of our Lord Jesus. Amen. We now have a musical tribute from our choir, I Have Felt the Hand of God.
And now, friends, I send you forth in the power and the grace of the Holy Spirit to welcome, to watch, to tell others of who our Lord Jesus is. By the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may the power and presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and in you, now and always. Amen. In this season of sheltering in place, we will have for our benediction the song, God be with you till we meet again. God bless.